Well, there is some kindness that comes from that cruel act. Yes. We'll have more on that in a few minutes. But first, good morning. Thank you for joining us on this Tuesday. I'm Brandon Hudson. And I am Amy Lang, and we begin with breaking news involving former President Donald Trump. He says he is the target of a federal investigation into the January 6th insurrection. The former president shared this on Truth Social on the platform. In the, state, in the statement, Trump said that Special Counsel Jack Smith has given him this week to appear before a grand jury, saying, quote, that almost always means an arrest and an indictment, end quote. The former president did not say whether he would appear before the grand jury and did not detail what specific charges may be filed. So far, there's been no comment from special counsel Jack Smith. Trump is currently the early front runner for the Republican nomination and is scheduled to travel to Iowa today where he is taping a town hall with Fox News host Sean Hannity. Also, we're a little more than a month away from the first GOP presidential debate, but it is not guaranteed if Trump will participate. Back here at home in Pontiac, there's a reward to find uh, who shot a man in a wheelchair with a pellet gun. The victim tells us that he thinks he was targeted because he's trans. Fox 2's Robert Murdoch isn't working the story for us all morning. Robin, this is a very emotional interview from this young man. Wait. You know, it is a very emotional interview from him and really everyone involved in this. A lot of adjectives being thrown out. The sheriff, in fact, describing what happened to the victim in this situation as despicable and cowardly, while the victim, who, as you guys mentioned, is confined to a wheelchair, he says this was frightening, that it was painful after being shot five times. He is sharing his story this morning, so no one else has to go through this. I didn't even get two blocks from my house and a small four-door car, beige car, just started shooting metal pellets at me. Andrew Blake Newton was hit five times as he drove his motorized wheelchair down the sidewalk in Pontiac on Saturday, the pellets piercing his side twice, each leg and his wrist. The incident over in just seconds, but the healing, both physically and mentally, will take much longer if ever. I know I'm going to get harassed. I know that there are people who are going to laugh at this story and say I deserved it because I'm trans and because I'm gay and polyamorous and that I'm in a wheelchair. But you know what? No one deserves this. It was about 12.15 on Saturday morning when we are told the 30-year-old who is bedridden when he's not in his chair was headed down Baldwin Avenue near Bennett to grab some snacks from a nearby gas station. That is when a car pulled up alongside him and the people People inside started firing, laughing, and then calling him transphobic names as they sped off. A hateful, despicable uh, criminal act to shoot somebody for whatever reason in a torturous manner. Obviously, not intended to kill someone when it's a pellet gun, but it kind of breaks down their feeling of safety and security and is, is a is a taunting, hateful kind of thing to do. The Oakland County Sheriff's Office now offering a reward in hopes of getting someone to talk and turn those suspects in. Their actions not just wounding this man, but part of the bigger picture and perhaps a bigger problem facing the queer community these days. Blake Newton's words, his weapon to protect others from something perhaps more sinister. No one should have to go through this and if we come together and we talk about what people are doing to us and we share our stories maybe we will finally be hurt such an agonizing experience for that man, and he really is very brave for sharing what he endured. Now, as we mentioned, the sheriff's office, they are now offering a $1,000 reward for information leading to an arrest in this case. If you happen to know anything at all, no matter how insignificant it may be, give the sheriff's department a call right away. We are live in Pontiac this morning. I'm Robin Murdoch for Fox 2 News. Yeah, this is already a traumatic experience to be attacked because uh, of the, the fact that you're who you are. However, this young man also has to be somewhat grateful that this was not a real weapon. Yeah, that was one of the things, Brandon, that he mentioned in this interview, how lucky he is that this was not a real gun, because if these were bullets that hit him instead of those pellets, they would have hit uh, likely one of his organs where they went in or perhaps a main artery. So he really is lucky that his injuries were not more significant. Back to you. Robin, we appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good day. Amy. Mm -hmm.
Well, developments this morning out of Shelby Township. Police are investigating the suspicious deaths of a man and a woman there. They were found inside a home on Whispering Oak Lane, not far from 25 Mile and Jewel Roads. Right now, police are not releasing much information. We do know the woman was 42 years old and the man was 39. Investigators would not say how the two died, but that the public is not in danger. They did say they're investigating whether domestic violence played a role. A 12-year-old girl, a preteen, is facing charges in an acid attack that left another child with severe burns all over her body. The young suspect is back in court today. Police say that the attack happened more than a week ago at Verner Elementary School on Detroit's west side. The 12-year-old appeared in court Saturday and received a $10,000 bond and tether. She's been ordered to have no contact with the victim or any witnesses. And listen to this. New at 11, a month-long human trafficking law enforcement operation getting results. The County of Macomb Enforcement Team, also known as Comet, recently executing two search warrants. During the operation, detectives located three survivors of human trafficking for the purpose of sexual exploitation. Investigators say detectives also located and seized $350,000 in suspected criminal profits. Utica, Shelby Township, also assisted Comet with the operation. Well, new this morning on Detroit's east side, firefighters, they battle flames that spread to two houses. It's happening near the intersection of Holcomb and Peter Hunt streets. Fox 2's Erica Francis with a closer look. Well, unfortunately, five people are now without a home this morning. That includes a baby, but the good news here is that everybody made it out safely. Fire officials telling me that this all started after a truck in one of the driveways caught fire, and then it unfortunately spread to both of these homes. I'm going to step out of the way so you can get a better look. This happening on Peter Hunt and Holcomb on Detroit's east side. DFD telling us that the fire started right after four this morning. Two people and a baby were sleeping inside of the green home there on the right. They made it out safely. Two people were inside of the other home here on the left. We spoke to the landlord of that home who tells us those two were renters and that everything they own is a total loss. They told me that the neighbor's truck caught fire and it caught their house on fire and it also got mine on fire also. And so I was hoping at least by me fixing houses, I was hoping it was like just maybe some vinyl damage or something, maybe a little smoke damage. But I got there and it's just totally ruined. Just, just everything just gone. Again, this all started after a truck in the driveway right there caught fire this morning. DFD is still working to learn how that truck caught fire. Obviously, everything is still under investigation. So once we learn more details, we will bring, we will bring those to you both on air and online at fox2detroit.com. On Detroit's east side, Erica Francis, Fox 2 News. And a shameful crime in Dearborn, a grown man fighting a 12-year-old boy and stealing his bike. But a state lawmaker who lives nearby decided to try to make things right. Fox 2's Dave Spencer with a story. Seeing this video. I see a kid get manhandled off his bike. Someone who looks just like my nieces or nephews. And I'm just like, I'm disheartened. I'm right away like, how is that? Oh, one okay and two, how's that happen in our community? State rep Alabas Farhat of Dearborn knew he had to do something. To be someone who can step up when I saw that meant a lot for me because I, again, like I grew up always read stories, other people doing it. I'm like, oh, this is my chance. So he went down to Walmart and bought a bike and made his way to the 12 year old's house. We showed up to the, to the house and, you know, I rang the family on the way there. They didn't tell the kid he was in the backyard playing with his brother and uh, we pop in. This is what happened next. This is your new bike. Not erasing the trauma of being attacked by a grown man, but a momentary smile that spoke a thousand words. He was happy. He was back on that bike, you know, within 24 hours of the, of, of the incident happening. And that's what we want, right? We, you know, there, there, there's two types of crimes. There's the crime of the bike getting stolen, and there's a the crime of robbing that kid of his memories in the summer. The crime itself happened last Thursday, right across the street. It was shared on social media by police and others, and somehow the suspect himself got wind and turned himself in, according to police. We were able to get them the bike. They were able to get the, the, the guy caught, and thankfully everyone's safe. Safe and confident that if someone does fall victim to a crime, someone else will have their back. And hopefully we set the message to folks that, you know, we, we want to be a community that loves each other, that cares for each other, looks out for each other. You know, if you're down near luck, we're here to help, but we're not here for stuff like that. In Dearborn, Dave Spencer, Fox 2 News. You like it?
Aw, so glad they were able yes. to give that boy back a bike and back his summer and hopefully back a little bit of his safety. Oh, for sure, for sure. And that is one of the beauties of this whole story is that someone saw it and they said, hey, look, this can't happen in our community, so they made it right. Absolutely. All right, so some other big news. Okay. One billion dollars. That's the estimated okay. jackpot for Wednesday's Powerball drawing. All right, so you're here, I'm here, which means neither one of us won. That's right. Uh, but... No one else did either. either. <laughs> yeah, that's the best part about it. Is, look, this is going to continue. So we're saying that there's still a chance for all of you. If you don't want to wait that long to strike it rich, you could try your luck at Mega Millions tonight. Uh, that jackpot isn't too shabby. Just a cool $640 million. We'll take it.